So what exactly causes a stiff leg? And more importantly, and something that's been coming up in the comments recently, is how do you normalize movement in a leg that seems to want to stay locked out all the time. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist, and on this channel we cover anything and everything related to mobility and health in the context of neurologic rehabilitation with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to reach whatever level you want to reach after damage to your brain or your spinal cord. And all that being said, today we are going to talk about a stiff leg. It is something that I've talked about before, but it has come up a couple of times with a couple of you regulars who I know have seen some of my other videos, so I'm going to approach it at a little bit of a different level. And really, I would consider this more almost a follow-up to the recent video I did where I broke down gait and walking. It definitely came up in the comments of that video of some of you having trouble to do certain movements in that video because your leg is stiff. So what are the two main reasons that might be causing your leg to feel stiff? Things I've talked about before, two main culprits after damage to your brain or your spinal cord are spasticity. So in the case of a stiff leg in the context of not being able to lift your leg. So I've done a ton of videos recently on the standing component of walking and how spasticity interferes with that. But this is sticking with the lifting component of the leg, what might make it harder to lift your leg or for your leg to feel stiff when you're trying to lift it? And that is spasticity or involuntary muscle contraction in the muscles that straighten the knee out. And I'll get into why you might be having difficulty with certain movements because of that in the next little section. The other thing is abnormal synergy patterns. I've talked a lot about this. There are normal synergy patterns where groups of muscles actually link together or they wire together. And this can be a good thing as far as being able to perform movements that are rote or movements that we perform all the time. It is good to have a few built-in codes so that your brain can just push those codes and groups of muscles will work together again to perform an activity or a movement that you do regularly. However, there are also abnormal synergy patterns that are extremely common after damage to your brain or your spinal cord. The two main ones are a flexor pattern in the lower extremity and an extensor pattern in the lower extremity when the leg feels stiff or you feel like you can't lift that leg, whether you're laying on your back or you're walking and you're trying to swing that leg through, most likely that is due to an extensor synergy pattern. So the muscles that have linked up in an extensor synergy pattern are the muscles that extend the hip, straighten the knee, and point the foot. And if you have a strong ingrained extensor synergy pattern, those three movements will happen all together and it's hard to isolate just one component of that without the other two happening. So that would definitely interfere with you being able to swing your leg forward if every time you try and swing your leg forward, or move any direction at the hip, the knee wants to lock out straight. And whether it's spasticity or an abnormal synergy pattern, it will feel near impossible to bend your knee. Whether you're laying down or you're standing and you're trying to walk, most likely it's going to be even harder when you're standing up so it's a good idea to master this movement laying down before going into some of those exercises that I showed in that previous video. So all that being said, today we're going to focus on how to address a stiff leg or start doing some drills or training activities to make it easier to bend your knee when you're standing up or how to isolate hip, knee, or ankle movement without the other three movements happening. So breaking up that abnormal synergy pattern. And the first one I would say would be to do movements with the knee already bent. So you don't have to worry about trying to bend the knee, but somehow figuring out a way to get your knee bent and performing hip movements without the knee being able to straighten out.
This is a beginning exercise for hip internal and external rotation. Anytime you're recovering from any kind of damage to your neurologic system, we always like to start proximal or closer to the core and kind of work outward. And the rotators are really important to build a foundation to build walking skills, standing skills, even getting in and out of bed. All of those things require really good stability around the hip. So basically the premise of this exercise, you want to keep your foot on the ground. A lot of times people want to flex their hip up. So you want to keep the foot on the surface that you're laying on. A firm surface usually works better. I reference this a lot, but a mat table is a really good investment for all of your foundational activities. And so for this one, you just want to keep that foot flat on the ground and just rotate that hip in and out without lifting the foot up off the surface. So once again, you're gonna lay with the involved leg bent. And again, just rotating that hip in and out, working those hip rotators, gaining a little bit more control. Now to build on that, in particular, when it comes to being able to lift the leg for walking, now you want to try and do any hip movement and bend the knee at the same time, kind of breaking up that extensor synergy pattern, but also if you have spasticity in your quadriceps, really being able to perform movements without that involuntary movement of that knee locking out, kicking in. So this is hip flexion in the early stages. So someone who cannot flex their hip or lift their leg up at all, what the ball does is just help to make that movement just a little bit easier. So this is a hip flexion exercise that you would do in the very early stages. If you're someone that's helping someone with this exercise, you might just wanna set someone up for success by stabilizing the ball a little bit and allowing it to just roll in one direction so that their leg does not flop out to the side, which is, the most common thing that happens if someone is super, super weak and still in the very early stages. You're just pulling that knee in towards the chest. Again, if you're someone that's helping someone do this exercise in the early stages, you might just want to help them by stabilizing the ball, not allowing it to roll out to the side, which is the most common thing that happens when someone does this exercise in the early stages. So now the next step would be to, instead of starting with your knee bent, start incorporating activities where you're bending that knee at the same time as performing some hip movements. So this rolling exercise is good for a few different stages in building that foundation to better standing and better walking. In the early stages, it's a great activity to start to learn how to roll so that caregivers can clean you up and things like that when you're in bed. Bringing your leg across your body helps to facilitate that rolling and teaches you how to really engage your abdominal muscles and your hip muscles at the same time. As you can see, bringing that leg up and over, if you can visualize walking, it's also a key movement or a critical movement in bringing the leg forward when you're walking. So early stages, bed bound, great activity to initially just start moving, but also in the later stages, it's a great activity to isolate one of the stages in the walking cycle. Now there's a few ways that you can modify this activity to make it a little bit easier. One way is just to put wedges underneath someone so that they're not starting flat on their back. So if you're a caregiver that's helping someone and they can't seem to roll from that flat position, you can always put a few wedges underneath that side of the body to help facilitate that movement. So here it is starting from a flat position. And again, remember the key is to engage those abdominals and those hip muscles at the same time to initiate that roll.
And then here are the wedges. You just want to stick those kind of so someone you can see now I'm kind of almost starting a little bit already going in that direction. So it just gives someone a little bit of a jump start if they're in the early stages and they can't do it from a flat position. And then if you wanted to take that one step further, you could do some sitting exercises. I've done a lot of these exercises in previous videos, but for those of you who are a little bit higher level and you just want a refresher, um, the ones I like are anything where you can do hip movement with the knee bent. So for this exercise, what you're doing is you are putting your involved leg on this little machine that has a little spring-loaded foot step in it. And what, you're, what we're trying to do specifically for this exercise is work those hip extensors, so those muscles that we work use at our hips to extend our leg backwards without going into a synergy pattern. So without having that associated knee extension. So it's really, really important. A lot of times, one of the big mistakes is this whole machine piece will slide out. If that's happening, put it in front of a wall to stop it from doing that. But eventually you do wanna be able to do it in open space like this, pushing down without it sliding out from underneath you. So we're trying to break up that pattern, work the hip extensors by pushing down without having the knee extend. If you have an AFO, I do recommend you wear your AFO on this because you don't want your foot pointing. Again, that is part of that extensor synergy pattern. And we are trying to break up that pattern and just isolate hip extension without having the knee straighten out and without having the foot point. So again, you are going to allow the machine to bring your knee up and then push down against that resistance and then allow the machine to bring your leg back up and then push down against that resistance and then allow the machine to lift your leg up and then push down against that resistance. And then you can always take this into now standing activities. Remember, I did say that it was going to be harder to bend your knee in standing than it was lying down. So definitely I would spend a lot of time doing the exercises laying down and not gloss over those. But if you are beyond that and you can bend your knee while also performing different movements at your hip and you notice that it does increase and you can't bend it once you stand up, here are some exercises to help you to relearn how to bend that knee in standing. So this is an active assisted exercise for hip flexion or lifting the leg up. And you're basically just gonna push it down and then allow that machine to help you lift your leg back up. So you're gonna push it down and then allow the machine to help you lift it back up. So this is for those of you where your leg feels like it gets stuck to the ground or you have weakness in the muscles that lift the leg up. What you want to pay attention to is that you are allowing that knee to bend as you bring the knee up. So it's definitely more of a passive movement. If you are someone where your leg is really stiff and it really locks out straight, what you really wanna think about when you're allowing that leg to come up is just that. Allow that leg to come up. Think very passive thoughts. Don't think lift the leg because then your spasticity is probably going to get worse, but just think relax and again, allow that machine to lift your leg up. For those of you with a lot of spasticity, it really is more about turning muscles off to get control back of your leg more so than turning muscles on. And this is one of the exercises that will help you do that. So you're going to push down and then allow the leg to come back up and push down and then just allow that leg to come back up. 
So I hope all of that was helpful. If you have any questions about these exercises or any other exercises, leave those in the comments below. I read every single comment and I will definitely read. And if I don't respond to your comment, I will definitely address it in a future video. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you all in the next video. You have a good day. Mm -hmm.